Hey guys, my name is Dirk Van Rienen. I'm the founder and CEO of Maris Adventure Park here in the absolutely stunning Peladero Canyon outside of Amarillo, Texas. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We're starting to put a little bit more time and effort and energy into this channel. So I hope you guys will subscribe and continue to follow us. Now, if you're here, you're probably here to find out what happened with the wreck that recently took place here at Maris Adventure. And the first thing I wanna say is right off the bat, as soon as we got the initial call, the first thing that we established was that there was, uh, everybody was safe and nobody was injured. So once we established those two things, then we kind of kicked into action and the video you're about to watch will kind of take you through that process of what happened all the way through to the very end. And this is a two part series. There's a lot to cover here. But uh, excited for you guys to watch this. And again, welcome to our Maris Adventure YouTube channel. So I just got a really unusual call. We've never actually had this call before, but I was in the office. A guest calls me freaking out and says, my Jeep went over the edge at campsite F. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it's one of our campsites that are right at the edge of the canyon don't know anything but about to pull up and find out what is going on here okay before we go any further let's talk about the geology and the topography at maris adventure park maris adventure is located in paladero canyon which is the second largest canyon in north america this canyon ranges from about 600 to 900 foot in elevation and it's made up of a lot of different materials. There's actually four different geological periods of materials that are exposed here all at one time. And this canyon is constantly eroding, breaking away. It is a really unforgiving terrain. Now the canyon is earmarked by this top layer formation called the Spanish Skirts, which is a caliche and sandstone based layer creating the first ledges of cliffs. And that's where our story starts today. As I'm driving, I'm driving to campsite F right here, and I'm about to pull up close to the edge. Let's see what happens. We're uh, pulling into F right now. Let's see what we can find out. Gosh. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, man, there's not much left of your vehicle. Yeah, maybe. Oh my god. Is that it? Yep. That's it. And the roof is to the right there. <sighs> this Jeep was parked on top. Um, he was getting his camping gear, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if the Jeep was in gear or what happened. Jeep started rolling, rolled down right here. The campsite's right up there, rolled down. And then, you know, it went off a 150 foot cliff. Brand new Jeep. I mean, it is far from a trail and it is way out of here. Um, not sure if we're going to have to get a massive wrecker out here or somehow, but we're going to have to figure out how to get this Jeep out of the canyon and all these spare parts. Um, the guy that this happened to, he's obviously in shock right now, but we're just trying to tell him like, hey, it's going to be okay. Your insurance is going to take care of it. But this is a, a first at Maris. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of how we get that Jeep out of here. Now, 
now we're heading back over to campsite F and we got the gentleman back up to the office and he called his insurance, he started filing a claim. We're gonna hike down and see what we can salvage, but from the pictures up top, this Jeep is a pancake. It's a 2023 4XE. And uh, the other thing we gotta check out is making sure that the battery is not leaking or there's a chance that it could start a fire. That would be a really bad situation. Um, but at this point, the big question for me is how are we going to recover this thing out here? Two thoughts is it's either gonna take um, you know, our crew a lot of time and effort and energy to get that Jeep out or we're gonna to have to bring a really large wrecker out because it is about 400 foot down the canyon and on the other side of it, it's not anywhere close to a trail. So we would have to really damage a lot of vegetation to get that Jeep out the other side, or it's gonna have to come back up the cliff, which is going to take a lot of pulling power. So we'll have to see what happens, but for now, we're just gonna go check it out. I'm just about down to where the Jeep is and it's still very steep, loose, just kind of sliding everywhere. Jackson and Neil are right behind us, but you're just seeing like the debris field now. Got doors, fender wells, just all kinds of stuff. I guess that's the spare tire, or maybe that's one of the other tires. And then there's the Jeep. Um, wow, look at this. There's a little piece of something right here. You can see this thing came down in a violent way. We're gonna have to do a lot of cleanup in this area. There's your filter. So you got to, this thing must have just come down in such a violent way. Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. First look. 2023 Jeep Wrangler 4XE. This thing is just destroyed. Oh my gosh. It seems to be kind of stable where it landed. Looks like all the uh, airbags deployed. You can smell oil. One of the things I was worried about is the, uh, the batteries. I mean, with this being a hybrid vehicle, what that looked like. 
Oh my gosh, look at this thing. Wow. That's what happens when a Jeep goes flying off of a cliff. And probably went end over end several times, rolled, whatever else. Thank God the driver was not in the vehicle or try to kind of jump in last minute and try to stop this. Um, I don't know that anybody would have survived this. We're probably maybe about 300 foot down, maybe 400. Um, but this thing is just absolutely destroyed. Yeah, so one of the concerns is, you know, being in a, a hybrid vehicle, this thing does have large battery cells on it. And obviously there's oil and gas kind of all over this vehicle. So don't hear any humming or any noise coming from the vehicle. Hopefully it'll stay that way. This is something else. I mean, to see a vehicle just mold like this, it's pretty unbelievable. We have a lot of interesting things that happen here at Maris Adventure Park where we have never had this happen before. So this gentleman got to his campsite, amazing view of the canyon right on the edge. And as he was getting out, he said his foot kind of caught on the netting and got distracted and the vehicle was left in neutral. He exited the vehicle and started unpacking it and the vehicle started rolling forward and just started picking up momentum, went off the cliff and this is what's remaining of it. And this is just, uh, again, a reminder that it's so important that any time that you stop your off-road vehicle, the best practice is always to turn it off and put it in park, right? Why? Because when you turn it off, it's going to start beeping at you and tell you that you're in neutral, that you're not in uh, park. So good practice is always turn it off. It was left running. The, big, the biggest concern we had right off the bat is one, is everybody okay? So yes, everybody was okay. It was just a guy that's out here solo camping. The second concern was, since this is a 4XC, a hybrid vehicle, would there be any issues with a battery, you know, causing fire out here? If a fire started out here, um, it would be really hard to fight a fire here and it could damage a lot of acreage, right? But, so, everybody's safe. It looks like everything's fine with the battery. So we're just making our way up the debris field right now. And there's just stuff scattered everywhere. Just parts, glass, more parts. Oh, here's the battery. There's a banana peel. <laughs> One of the freedom panels. Look right up above your head, there's even something right there. Just stuff everywhere. See if we can walk around. Just crazy, so much stuff. Some of the stuff's already covered in debris. This is really wild. I think it must have come over the cliff right up there. A big chunk missing right there and then right on the top of this rock and I think it just started rolling went end over end ended up way down there the big question is how we're going to get it out 
And secondly, how long is it gonna to take to clean up all this, uh, this stuff and uh, get the oils and the fluids and all that cleaned up too. It's gonna to be a big job. early morning on Thursday for some reason I couldn't sleep last night so I got up uh, at around I was laying in bed awake at 3 a.m. just thinking about things got up at like 4 and came up here to the office um, and just thinking about a ton of different things but one of the things I'm really thinking about is this recovery that we're going to be looking at the question is should our team recover the Jeep that went off the cliff or should we let somebody else handle it? Now, obviously I think the insurance company is gonna have a big say in it. I think for a lot of reasons, our team, especially our stage five off-road academy team um, is the right team to recover this. And, and here's why. There's, um, there's obviously wrecking services, stuff like that that's out there, which it's not that hard to get a big wrecking truck up here with a massive winch to pull, to pull the Jeep up. However, the terrain out there, as you've seen, is just insanely challenging to work in. Our team is very used to working this canyon on the loose stuff on very uh, unforgiving, steep terrain. And I think the rigging part is actually gonna be one of the hardest things to, to get done safely. So anyway, Pete and I are gonna be getting together and really kind of talking through this, but. So it's Friday afternoon. Pete and I are out here doing a scouting mission to see what does it look like to extract the Jeep down back into the bottom of the canyon and then take the roads back. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of work. There's going to be a lot of brush that we're going to have to clear. The challenge is, you know, clearing those ledges up there are going to be really hard. You can see part of the debris field up there may be able to see the Jeep from here. I think it's just behind the tree line, but you can see the debris field. The challenge is you're going up multiple cliffs, trying to get all the way to the top right there. So that's kind of the one route. The other one is to go all the way from there back to where we are now. And then from here, we probably have five or six miles of road to get this thing to the top. And there's probably no chance that this thing's gonna be rolling. So. Um, we're scouting it out so we can make a decision. We got the team coming in first thing in the morning, put the game plan together and get this thing out of here. This is Pete. I invited Pete and his wife, Ian to become business partners of mine in Maris Adventure in 2023. And I absolutely love working with them on this project. You'll learn more about Pete later on, but one thing to understand is that he is a, an exceptionally great leader and a really thoughtful, strategic thinker. You can't get it over. What do we do? I think if we get it all the way up there and we can't get it up, we just drop it down to the next flat area, rest it there, and then bring in a crane. I think we'll get it over that ledge. Pete and I just got done hiking in from the bottom up to the wrecked Jeep. Just seeing is there a way that we can bring it down the bottom side and the amount of brush that we, we would need to clear would take a week to do. Um, still lots of rock, multiple creeks. Some of those creeks are really narrow. So if you kind of get into an area like that, you're gonna have to clear a lot of dirt. Otherwise that Jeep's gonna get wedged, wedged in there and so i think we're back to the original plan which is pull it from the top so we're going to share the whole plan on what we believe is going to to work um 
the challenge is we have some straight up vertical ledges to go up and Pete's concern is that we get it up to one of those ledges and then we just can't get it over and we get the vehicle stuck in that point which if that happens really the only option is to kind of get it settled down again in the next flattest part we can and we have to call a helicopter in that's the only other option at that point all right guys so here you saw it something very simple caused a really big accident and thank god that the driver wasn't in the vehicle or try to run after it and jump back in or there was a child in the back seat or another family member situations like this can go wrong very very quickly and can have devastating consequences the big lesson here is if you're doing vehicle-based adventures if you're off-roading and you come to a stop just put it in park and turn the vehicle off I see a lot of people that leave the vehicle running when they get to a stopping point. You know, even if it's a minute or two or three, they leave the vehicles running. Best practice is always to put it in park and turn the vehicle off. That's your safest chance to never have something like this happen to you.